so that i'm uh, making you host so you can start recording then just a so you are host now sir you thank you you we'll say the you we'll say the prayer hame apne man ko hamesha संतुलित रखना है इसी में हमारा आत्मविकास समाया हुआ है वी हैव टू स्ट्राइव एंड कीप अवर माइंड ऑलवेज इन बैलेंस स्टेट बिकॉज इन सच बैलेंस स्टेट ओनली वी कैन राइज वी कैन ग्रो contemplate on this okay <clears throat> so in last two sessions we did sutra 1 of chapter 2 sadhana path now today we will see the next sutra in last two sessions we talked about we discussed about kriya yog tap swadhyay ishwar pranidhan three techniques were discussed and they why they constitute kriya yoga and what is meant by kriya yoga this we have discussed in past two sessions now this next sutra it reads samadhi bhavnarth klesha tanukarnarthascha samadhi bhavnarth klesha tanukarnarthascha so kriya yoga should be practiced for bringing about samadhi and minimizing the kleshas samadhi ki bhavna tatha klesho ka shay karne ke liye kriya yog ka abhyas karna chahiye ye dusra sutra bol raha hai to ab isko thoda sa hum log dekhenge ki how how kriya yog is helping in two objectives one is samadhi bhavna attaining samadhi and the other is minimizing or weakening the kleshas here we have to notice that uh, Patanj patanjali has not talked about destroying the kleshas he is only talking about weakening the kleshas klesha tanu karna arthas this word tanu karna is very very important and samadhi bhavna arth to prepare the mind for samadhi so these are the twin objectives which are there for which the kriya yoga has to be practiced now the samadhi bhavnartha klesha tanukarnartha in third sutra he immediately introduces what are kleshas he doesn't go into the detail of samadhi why he is not going into the details of samadhi because samadhi has already been covered in great detail in chapter 1 so the entire chapter 1 the name itself is samadhi path on concentration talking about concentration talking about samadhi so details have been given in chapter 1 but some of you might not have been there in those classes so very briefly we will go into these details and we understand what is meant by samadhi so uh, at the very beginning in the sutras yoga chitta vritti nirodha that was the definition what is yoga yoga is control of modifications of the mind and ultimately stopping these modifications that is what the yoga is and then they went on in to the details of the vrittis what constitute vrittis and then after the vrittis are controlled they explained about samadhi so two kinds of samadhi has been talked about 
samprajnata samadhi and asamprajnata samadhi later on we will see in chapter 3 sutra 3 samadhi has been defined so samadhi has been defined in such a way that where mind becomes so concentrated that mind becomes one with the object and as if the self consciousness that i am concentrating i am focusing my mind i am doing this that is also lost so even the self consciousness is lost and only the object remains before the mind as if the object pervades our entire personality it pervades our entire mind that is what is samadhi that has been explained but two kinds of samadhi has been talked about one is sampragnata samadhi the other is asampragnata samadhi so when we are talking about sampragnata samadhi what do we mean by that and last time we discussed about five kinds of chitta bhumis all human beings they are habitually you know remaining in certain states of mind so whatever is our state of mind generally throughout the day that is our personality structure that is what we are so from that perspective we saw five kinds of uh, chitta bhumis have been talked about shipta mudha vikshipta ekagra and niruddha these were the five states which we were talked about so this sampragnata samadhi is that samadhi which is attained in ekagra chitta even if the concentration is available to the earlier three states that is mudha shipta and vikshipta that concentration is not of much use and that concentration will not help in attaining samadhi or weakening of the kleshas so for that ekagra chitta has to be there and chapter 1 was pertaining to ekagra chitta only so those people who are already samahita they are one pointed their mental balance is there so for them samadhi is easy so sampragnata samadhi is that samadhi which is attained in ekagra chitta now here see when we looked at the previous two uh, in previous two uh, sessions when we looked at the chitta bhumis uh, in the first session we discussed about uh, this uh, vithita chitta or distracted mind and distracted mind will fall under either of the three categories of shipta mudha and vikshipta it is not ekagra and for such a mind kriya yoga has been recommended so what will what what kriya yoga will do it will create a state of mind which will be similar to ekagra so one can change the state of mind from distracted state dis, uh, disturbed state and move towards ekagra and one pointed states that is what is the aim of kriya yoga so if even if we are having distracted mind disturbed mind weak mind then with the help of kriya yoga we can create the right frame of mind and right state of mind where the samadhi can become possible so that is the first aim and under the sampragnata samadhi there were four categories depending on the objects of samadhi because sampragnata samadhi is sabija samadhi some object is there before the mind so there are four categories of sampragnata samadhi vitarka vichara ananda and asmita so these are technical terms but let us understand that whenever we want to acquire knowledge the purpose is to acquire right kind of knowledge we all are having very good concentrations actually but this this kind of concentration is not conducive to the samadhi which yoga is talking about because this concentration is normally not voluntary it is involuntary kind of concentration we are good at we get attracted towards things and those things which are attractive to us we get concentrated in them very easily so if we like movies we can get concentrated in movie if we like sports we can easily get concentrated in sports and we can spend hours and hours together in sports any kind of uh, hobby we have we can get lost into that and remain concentrated in that hobby but that concentration really doesn't bring about much change in our personality and here yoga is talking about that concentration where our personalities get some kind of you know influence on them and then they change the shipta state has to move towards ekagra the mudha state has to move towards ekagra vikshipta chitta which is occasionally steady also has to come to a level where it can remain steady calm and relaxed and focused for longer duration so all kinds of distracted and disturbed minds for them kriya yoga will be helpful and then when we are acquiring the knowledge the knowledge is also has having different kind of categories 
so there is a knowledge of grosser things which are there which are very obvious to us which uh, you know senses immediately see them perceive them so those kind of objects will be considered as gross objects it is very easy to acquire knowledge about gross knowledge but even that knowledge is not really good knowledge so we have to go deeper into the knowledge of gross objects so acquiring knowledge of gross object is vitark acquiring knowledge of the subtle object is vichar and then the process through which we are acquiring knowledge we are using our senses the faculties we have panchagyan indriyas panchakarma indriyas we are using our manas we are using our ahankar all these antakaranas which we are using so the process of focusing our mind on the process of knowing process of acquiring knowledge process of experiencing the world that is where the ananda comes so that is the third category of samadhi and then the fourth category of samadhi is asmita who is knowing who is acquiring the knowledge so there are the questions like who am i how i am acquiring knowledge and ultimately what is my nature what what is the constituent i have in my personality so there asmita becomes the object of concentration so these four categories are known as sampragnata samadhi and then there is a third uh, there is a second category of samadhi that is asampragnata asampragnata is nirvija samadhi where the mind is so focused so concentrated that as if you know by one's own will power one can stop the functioning of the mind one acquires such a control over the mind that mind can be stopped that is the level of concentration one reaches when that happens there is no object so it is known as nirvija and because that nirvija can wipe out the past impressions and the past sanskaras so gradually it leads us into the asampragnata yoga so two kinds of yoga patanjali talks about sampragnata yoga and asampragnata yoga we can say sampragnata samadhi or asampragnata samadhi two kinds of samadhis so this was the brief uh, you know idea about samadhi now you see when we talk about this samadhi bhavanartha what do we mean by that do we not have it do we not have that mental state where we we can acquire samadhi we can attain samadhi unfortunately if we belong to the first three categories of chitta bhumis and these first three categories of chitta bhumis again can be subdivided into so many varieties depending upon the slight change in gunas our personality changes so sattva rajas tamas is the basic uh, structure but in that also if we try to understand Uh, you know even little change in sattva personality changes little change in rajas personality changes so these constituents gunas they form different kinds of personalities because of the different proportions so even among the shipta mood of ikshipta that is obsessed and distracted and uh, occasionally study minds in those minds also there will be varieties of personalities that is what is the contention so in a way when when a person is taking up the path of kriya yoga there is a moment from shipta mudha vikshipta to ekagra so this is what kriya yoga does and how it does it by creating the samadhi bhavana now when we talk about bhavana bhavana has been translated in many ways it can be translated like in uh, common parlance in most of the indian languages when we translate bhavana it is feelings what are our feelings those are the you know the, the those are the meanings given to many languages in indian uh, continent and then uh, there is another meaning of it attitude attitude so that is also bhavana and this bhavana word is very very significant in uh, patanjali yoga sutra if you remember this bhavana word has come in sutra 33 there also this bhavana word in the same sense has been used so maitri karuna mudita upekshana सुख दुख पुण्य अपुण्य चित्त प्रसादनम तो मैत्री करुणा मुदिता की भावना करने से जब उसमें थोड़ी स्थिति आती है तब चित्त का प्रसाद होता है चित्त प्रसादनम द माइंड अटेंड्स प्यूरिफिकेशन माइंड अटेंड्स प्यूरिटी सो देयर वेरियस मेथड्स वेयर सजेस्टेड फॉर प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ चित्त बट हियर इट इज द क्रिया योग विच इज सजेस्टेड so through kriya yoga the purification is taking place that purification is in the form of weakening of the kleshas 
So klesha tanu karnartha, that is the second object. So now this looking at this bhavna, some feeling, some attitude, some kind of particular thinking, some line line of thought, when it is consciously and voluntarily repeated again and again, again and again, then it requires the form of bhavna. If we are repeating that again and again consciously with effort, so that is what is needed, that bhavnas are there, but then the, it will not turn into this yogic kind of bhavna unless it has been consciously repeated again and again. So for example, if a person has got a personality which is nervous kind, it gets stressed very easily, it gets disturbed very easily. Now what this person has to do, do to change this attitude, this, this is an attitude where little stress comes, the person becomes really, really tense and stressed. And then he's not able to focus, he's not able to function well, he becomes weak. So this is what is happening. So in this case, what will help him is that he has to develop an opposite feeling in the form of bhavna. You know, every time there is an occasion where one is feeling tense, he has to create that relaxation. He has to relax, create that confidence. Now, this confidence and relaxation, it will not come automatically. It cannot happen that, you know, the time is going and, uh, you know, things will change. My, my attitude or my, my habit of becoming tense again and again, it will vanish automatically it, or I will wish it away. That doesn't happen. So if I have certain weakness, I have to really tackle it. I have to really, really cope up with by maintaining opposite states which, are, which can control it. So what will control the uh, reaction of stress and tension? It is the relaxed feeling and feeling confident that I can deal with the situation. Because ultimately, stress is always perceived as something which cannot be managed by us. If that perception is there, then the stress is there. Then we are really lost. We don't know what to do. So we, we require certain amount of relaxation and certain amount of confidence. Now, this confidence has to be created again and again by going through the similar situation where we are feeling tense. Now, this is where the tapa comes in. And through this repetition, gradually a habit will be formed, gradually an attitude will be formed where we will be able to cope up with the challenges which are coming in our day-to-day -day life. So instead of becoming a personality which is prone to getting tense again and again, now we become more confident and now we become more relaxed. So this is, this is the way we are bringing about change in our personality. And this is the only way. Last time I was telling you that uh, there is no other way to really grow and evolve unless we go through the process, go through the rigor, go through the repetition of facing certain situations creating certain mental states which are worthwhile, which are strong, we will not be able to overcome these past sanskaras. And we are interested in uh, overcoming these past sanskaras. The past attitudes, past wrong things, we, have, we, want to, we are interested in overcoming. So for that, this bhavna has to be created. Now that is the meaning of the bhavna. And what is samadhi bhavna? Samadhi bhavna is automatically, we, every time we are, we are practicing Kriya Yoga to such an extent that our mind tends to become ekagra. Our mind becomes tends to become one-pointed. So that one-pointedness becomes our nature. Uh, habitually, we become little more aware. We become more analytical. The moment there are changes in the thought patterns, we are immediately able to catch, yeah, I'm, uh, these thoughts are coming in my mind. And if these are negative thoughts, let me control them. Let me throw them away and let me create a good state of mind. So there will be an attitude where we keep on creating positive states of mind where concentration is there, their steadiness is there, where we can remain focused for a little longer duration. The concentration increases. And when this happens, then that state of mind will be the ekagra state of mind. So in a way, Kriya Yoga is helping us to create that ekagra Chitta, Ekagra Chitta Bhumi, that habitual state of being Ekagra. So then nothing can disturb, you know, every time some disturbance occurs, very easily one can go back to that Ekagra state. When such a state of mind will be created, then we will say that now mind is in Samadhi Bhavna. Samadhi has not yet taken place, but now it is in a state where Samadhi can easily happen. So that is what is meant by Samadhi Bhavna. Now, 
when we talk about samadhi bhavana what why why we are not able to do that right now why we are in a shifta state why we are in a vikshipta state why we are in a mudra state sometimes we are mudra sometimes we are shifta sometimes we are vikshipta this is also fluctuating so no pure state is possible if you if you have heard about and read about ayurveda principles the ayurveda talks about three basic kinds of personalities vata pitta and kapha but you will hardly find any persons having pure vata personality you will hardly find anybody having pitta personality or vata personality purely it will be a mixture of two some traits of vata will be there and some pitta will be there or some kapha will be there so that way there will be mixture same way when we talk about shipta mudra vikshipta we all are combination of shipta mudra vikshipta sometimes we are very steady and calm and we are joyful we are focused we are concentrated and sometimes when situation is bad or something goes wrong we are so depressed and we are so sad that we are not able to control or generally the way we have a mola melancholy in our mind all the time sadness is there now these are all signs of you know this uh, uh, ship, uh, shipta mudra vikshipta so it is a process through which we are going now why why we are not have, having this ekagrata because we have kleshas because we have kleshas that's why this sutra says klesha tanukarnarthas so kriya yoga is to be practiced for samadhi bhavana to attain samadhi state also to weaken the kleshas so what are the kleshas now two things are there kleshas and tanukarna these are the two words which have come in the sutras so now let us understand what the kleshas are now kleshas are the technical word word of words technical uh, meaning is there and kleshas uh, the moment somebody from belonging to yoga tradition he hears the word kleshas immediately in his mind five things will be coming avidya asmita raag dvesh abhinivesh so these are the five kleshas which are mentioned in the next sutra in the third sutra so what do we mean by kleshas and let us understand what is the nature of these kleshas and how do we identify these kleshas in our personality because uh, ultimately one has to understand that if the kleshas are not weakened yoga cannot be attained we are not moving in right direction if we are not able to weaken the kleshas yoga is a process of weakening the kleshas like the definition of uh, yoga is there yoga chitta vritti nirodha that is one definition of yoga if you ask me what is the definition of yoga i will give another definition yoga is a process of weakening the kleshas and destroying the kleshas this is this way also yoga can be defined so unless the work is done on the kleshas nothing is possible somewhere the as we are progressing in the chapter 2 you will find again and again we will be talking about the kleshas and we will see how these kleshas are weakening this is very significant and very important so important that uh, you know i had a habit uh, whenever uh, some assignment came my way of giving talks at some place visiting some place and you know giving talk on yoga sutras i will always make it a point that before going i'll meet dr jaydev and i'll ask him that this is the audience i am going to address and this is what uh, the topic is and you tell me what should be my focus and wh- what should i do and invariably i found that always it it ended up with kleshas i i'll give you an example you know some uh, a group of around 200 doctors had come to yoga institute once it was a big program and uh, these were all doctors from all over bombay and uh, you know i was uh, asked to take uh, a session of kriyas with them shat karma dhauti vasti neti navli trata so uh, i was little worried because these were medical people as far as the, you know mind was con- uh, this body mind was concerned as far as the medical part was concerned they were very superior and some of them were very senior so i was little nervous i said how i am going to talk to them about kriyas because they know about anatomy physiology much more than i know so i was worried and i went to dr jaydev and i asked him that uh, see these senior people are there all doctors are there and i have to talk on kriyas what should i focus on so he said that uh, although they are masters of their field but yoga is a totally different field 
you are going to talk about things which they have perhaps now never experienced in their life and uh, you know these kriyas are also connected to the kleshas because whenever you are doing kriyas somewhere the kleshas are touched and kleshas are weakened so such a small thing like you know everyday kriyas which we do as a routine like kapal bhati kapal randra dauti jalan neeti tratak we are doing even that has got connection with kleshas because whenever you will do some kriya you will find that you are going into a positive frame of mind you know you are you are becoming relaxed all the tension all the fears are gone and for temporarily as long as the effect of that kriya lasts you know you are in a very positive frame of mind i don't know uh, the way we are doing jalneti what do we experience after doing jalneti it's a different state of mind altogether so this way he will he will always bring it down the klesha then later on also at many places whenever i went, went and asked him this is the talk i have to give again he will bring that see you have to focus on the kleshas if you are practicing yoga then kleshas have to be weakened that is the primary thing if that is not happening then ask yourself what is going wrong where it is going wrong and why it is not happening so agar hum yog kar rahe hain to hamara gussa kam hona chahiye if we are practicing yoga we should become less and less angry less and less uh, uh, you know uh, kind of uh, negativity has to come down less af- afraid less worried less tense we should become more relaxed more uh, stable more steady and we should become calm our anger should come down our re- rejection com- should come down our resentment should come down if that is not happening then we have to ask ourselves what is going wrong what am i am doing which is not helping me so somewhere all practices of yoga we will go into the detail of it later on you know how each each practice is connected to this and how they create such frames of mind such states of mind where the kleshas are weakened so what are these kleshas these kleshas are five in number according to patanjali avidya asmita rag dvesh abhinivesh in other systems of thoughts these kleshas are universal in nature see the, the in, these are the personality structures which weaken us they are, we are born with that that's why patanjali has said through kriya yog he is not talked about destroying the klesha he is saying weakening the klesha because destruction will come at a much later stage so they are part of our personality we are born with kleshas they are part of our uh, structure so doctor used to call them structural defects kleshas our are our structural defects and it is not easy to overcome or work on the structural defects but that is what yoga is it is working on these kleshas so these are the negative traits in our personality negative attitudes negative dispositions we have because of which we suffer a lot without exception all of us who are present here you know listening to this we all want to grow in life we want to and we want to be unstoppable we want to grow wherever we want to go wherever we want to wish we we should go we we are trying for that but then always we find that something restricts us something pulls us back it weakens us it is not allowing us to really grow and evolve what is it which is weakening us what is it which is stopping us often you will find it is the kleshas which are responsible for all the problems we are facing in life all the pains and miseries all the sufferings which we have at at the physical level at the mental level at the moral level at the spiritual level at every level of personality we suffer because of these kleshas so are these kleshas only a trademark of yoga no not at all in every part of the world in every systems of thought in every religion kleshas have been talked about so let us look at the indian thinking in india there are systems so when we talk about sankhya and yoga they accept the kleshas sankhya also talks about the kleshas there they are given some different names are also given there so uh, uh, klesha may appear in uh, with, uh, with different names in sankhya karikas but those same kleshas are there and then in vedanta these very kleshas are taking the form of shadarip shadarippu has been highlighted and given too much importance and you know it is necessary to work on this shadarippu so what are these shadarippus tama krodha lobha moha mad matsar so again you will find all these six shadarippus they will be getting connected to the five kleshas 
we'll see how they are getting connected to that when we are in discussing each of the kleshas individually avidya separately asmita separately when we will discuss that we will see how the connections are there but vedanta recognize this them as shadaripu jainas recognize them as kleshas both buddha recognizes them as kleshas in in uh, in buddha's literature in all in mahayana hinayana everywhere you will find the kleshas have been talked about so there also kleshas are taken in the form of the defects we have in the personality the weaknesses we have the desires we have or the negative new emotions all negative emotions which are there in our personality so these kleshas are all those negative personality aspects according to buddha also according to mahavir also in jainism entire jainism kleshas have been talked about then in religions also you will find in islam it is known as nafs there is the technical word they use nafs nafs is responsible for downgrade it pulls us down instead of taking us towards the direction of spirituality it pulls us down it makes us more and more materialistic it makes us do things which are totally wrong that is what nafs is so all the sufis in the world they are their primary aim is to work on the nafs sufis are trying to do only this thing that they want to weaken this nafs and nafs appears primarily in the form of egoity ego consciousness i am something i am i am great i am consciousness i am this i am that so this is what is uh, you know most uh, significant in their path so they try to all their efforts all the techniques because sufis are normally or mystics are normally not uh, you know working consciously through techniques but there are a segment a section of sufis who do adopt certain techniques you know many techniques they adopt so every week or every day they will meet and you know practice like this uh, moving darveshes are there revolving darveshes are there or they will chant the names or uh, you know you all know about qawwali qawwali is also a form of singing and music which is adopted by sufis why they are adopting it because they want to weaken the klesha in the form of nafs even christianity recognizes that, that we have these personalities and later on we will find that, you know uh, that uh, the ultimate the first klesha avidya is related to how interestingly it will be seen if we equate it with the adam and eve what happened in the you know that garden eden garden where uh, uh, this was uh, adam and eve were living and what happened why he had to go out of the heaven so there there is a klesha responsible for that and uh, uh, christianity also talked talk, talks about purification so all religious practices are there for purification yoga sutra is also talking about purification if you see arandya's commentary the very first paragraph he talks about what kriya yoga does it purifies so what it purifies it reduces the tamas and rajas it takes the uh, you know these vrittis of shipta mood of ikshipta it controls them and take us to a ekagra more and more satvik states are created so kleshas are a universal weakness pattern in every human being all human beings are subject to kleshas in one way or the other kleshas are creating problems and these kleshas have been right from the beginning they have been there so when the question may arise that okay you know what about the people of 2000 years back 3000 years back but you will be surprised kleshas were equally strong in people who were 3000 years ago 2000 years at buddha's time kleshas were very prominent thing at mahavir's time kleshas were very prominent thing jesus christ were very prominent kleshas so kleshas have been the uh, you know important part of human personality and in a way all spiritual journey begins with weakening of the kleshas so here this sutra is talking about weakening of the kleshas as uh, you know this ashuddhi shaya that is what is important and ashuddhi is a concept ashuddhi is always related to the kleshas impurities in our personalities are always somehow related when the negative thought comes from where negative thoughts come fear comes from where fear comes resentment comes hatred comes destru 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 uh, destructive feelings come anger comes rage comes and we we want to you know we are so negative that we are just shouting and we want to break things and we want to do very destructive things all this come from where the root cause is the kleshas and these are part of our personality and in a way 
it is uh, proved also by modern science also if we if you look at the uh, i'm going in detail a little detail to understand that how important it is to understand the glaciers even sigmund freud has got, talk, talked about it he says that in human being there are destructive forces there are biological drives there are impulses which are of destructive kind so there is a part of our being which is destructive or we have that energy in our personality which can be destructive and which is responsible for all the problems we have so sigmund freud has also talked about it and in psychology a normal person is one who can cope up with this destructive tendencies that is what is the significance of psychoanalysis he created when these glaciers become so strong that uh, they overpower the mind then all the psychological problems also will start imbalance in the mental processes will start so there there might be abnormality in the individual because of the glaciers so entire abnormal psychology draws heavily from these glaciers glaciers are forming the root there so when we go to a therapist he will see that you know which glaciers they may not use the word avidya asmita in the form of yoga names they are they have, they have their own names but ultimately these are the same ideas which you will find so these are the destructive forces talked about everywhere and ultimately it is the aim of yoga to really work on it now important part at practical level we have to understand that every time every time we are acting without awareness where we are not using our will but we are we are living a ordinary life in ordinary life things are happening we get up we we do activities we go to office we meet people but all the time when we are functioning at a level where we are not aware as to what is happening the glaciers are strengthen strengthen and whenever we are guided by likes and dislikes the glaciers are strengthen and look at the you know our entire day to day living what are we trying to do we are all the time guided by glaciers and if we don't pay attention to this glacier idea or if we don't work on it consciously then glaciers will go on strengthening and they are responsible for see indian thinking they believe in the life and death process we go on getting born in newer and newer forms why it is continuing that we are again dying and again taking birth dying and again taking birth this entire process of reincarnation and this uh, janma janma maran ka jo chakkar hai ये क्यों चल रहा है ये क्लेशों के वजह से चल रहा है तो इन इन व्यास भाष्य वेरी ब्यूटीफुली दे है गिवन क्लेश क्या करते हैं व्हाट डू दिस क्लेशर्स डू दिस क्लेशर्स विल स्ट्रेंथन द स्वे ऑफ गुणास सो न्यूअर एंड न्यूअर स्टेट्स विल बी क्रिएटेड बाय गुणास अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ क्लेशर्स आवर क्लेशर्स ओनली आर क्रिएटिंग बुद्ध सेट व्हाट इज द कॉज ऑफ पेन द कॉज ऑफ पेन इज डिजायर फ्रॉम वेयर द डिजायर कम्स डिजायर कम्स फ्रॉम क्लेशर्स and ultimately the final glacier which buddha has identified is avidya of course as patanjali also identifies avidya as the root cause buddha also identifies avidya as a root cause so because of that more and more gunas more and more new states are created if we think little deeply everything we do in our daily life somewhere the glaciers is is hiding and it is motivating us to act and if we are acting under the motivation of a klesha we are strengthening them it is only when we are able to break the chain with the help of kriya yoga now tapa for example we will see that how 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 kriya yoga is helping now for example tapa so when we are sitting for example when we are asked to sit in meditation for 20 minutes and then after 10 minutes we are getting uh, very restless mind is agitated our body is becoming little painful so we want to change the position now here the klesha is operating klesha wants us to become comfortable and if we persist and we say that i will bear the pain but i will not change position then we are working against the kleshas but this way how many times in a day we are working in a month in a year how many times we have really worked on our personality in such a manner where we are so observant and so uh, aware that you know no matter what i will not change the position or i will not change my mental state i'll maintain this mental strength i'll maintain st strength and uh, you know this steadiness 
So this is where you know the importance of kleshas and working on the kleshas come in. As long as we are under the influence of kleshas, we will continue to face the problems in life. If we have certain personality trait which is creating problems for us, it will go on creating these problems. It will not change unless we work on the kleshas. So if you want to bring about a change in our personality for better, if you want to improve in any area, then in that area we have to weaken the kleshas. Without that, it is not possible to grow and evolve. This is a simple thing. Now, as I told you, they are so important. We will do a small meditation, a small reflection we will do. Take a relaxed position, close your eyes and take up today's activity. Out of today's activity, take any simple one or two activities which you consider are important for you, which you did today. And after identifying one or two activities, ask yourself, why did I do it? What motivated me to do this? And had I not done it, what would have happened? So you may find that you will find a reason why you did it. And then if you persist, if you think deeper, you will find another reason to it. And you may find yet another reason to it. You may find four or five reasons for one thing which you did. Today. But for, for about five to seven minutes, just take one activity and go deep into it. Why? What motivated you to do it? If you will not do it, what will happen? So one or two or three activities according to your uh, you know, choice. Uh, you are free to choose any activity which you did today. But contemplation is that why did I do it? What was my motivation? Had I not done it, what would have happened? Just, just ask this question and for about uh, five to seven, around seven minutes we will do it. Around seven minutes we will do it. Start.
Okay. Now, uh, since we are not physically in front of each other and uh, the time also doesn't per permit for sharing individually, so I'll not ask anybody to share as to what they found, uh, what they were able to find out about the glaciers. But this is one technique, this practice as a part of Tapa, as a part of Swadhyay. If we do it every day, that uh, you know, throughout the day, take some important activity and ask, why did I do it? What was the reason for me doing it? And had I not done it, what would have happened? So asking this question and going deep into that area, it can reveal lots of glaciers hidden in our personality. And this can be, this practice can be also extended where if you are feeling strongly about doing something, you are drawn towards something, you are attracted towards something, and uh, you, you are, you know, wanting to do something, then also this five minutes meditation or seven minute meditation can be done. Why I want to do it? What is motivating me to do it? Where it will lead to? If we can develop this habit of this reflection every day for some time as a part of tapa, as a part of swadhyay, of, as a part of entire Kriya Yoga, then we can learn about our personality much more than by what we will learn by reading 100 books or watching some videos. Ourselves, we will learn about ourselves at a very deep level, what motivates us, what is it which is, uh, you know, we are wanting in life. So many things will be revealed by this simple technique of asking this question. Kleshas, again and again, we will talk about the kleshas because they are most important in yoga. And uh, next time onwards, we will be individually discussing each of the kleshas, avidya onwards. And there, these connections will be again seen. How, what life experiences we are going through, uh, they get connected to the kleshas, which kleshas are operating. And because by doing what, we can avoid certain recurrences of negative experiences, bad experiences how to avoid them, which glaciers are operating. If you are able to identify, if you are able to understand which glaciers are operating, uh, they say that uh, in yoga, they say becoming aware, it, only becoming aware is half the battle won. If, even if you become aware why certain things are happening, then halfway we are there. We are already on the path of uh, you know development and growth. So that process will take place. Now, little time is there. If there are questions. Niranjan, ye, uh, the lowest is Vikshipt or Mood? So actually, what is the right thing? Is the Mood the lowest or the Vikshipt? तो तो गुणों के हिसाब से देखेंगे तो मूड तमस है या दैट इज व्हाट आई वाज अ लिटिल कंफ्यूज यस ऑपरेशन कम्स फ्रॉम तमस एंड शिफ्ट एजिटेशन एंड एक्टिविटी कम्स फ्रॉम रजस सो शिफ्ट इज अ एजिटेटेड माइंड डिस्ट्रैक्टेड माइंड रनिंग हियर एंड देयर ऑल द टाइम यू नो डिस्ट्रैक्टेड थिंकिंग ऑफ समथिंग और द अदर दैट इज द शिफ्ट एंड मूड इज वन इज ऑब्सेस्ड but in, in, you know, there is also, one has to see this play of gunas, that when there is an obsession, there's a lot of energy, you know, one sticks to his guns and one is, you know, pursuing something very obsessively. So there, uh, the, you know, tamas is very predominant, but rajas is also supporting. And in vikshipta, occasionally sattva comes in. Rajas, tamas play their role, but sattva, when sattva comes, the mind becomes steady. So, like, it is the... Shift the mood of Vikshipt, it's that way. Yeah. Shift the mood of Vikshipt, Ekagra Niruddha. Okay. Fine. How do you spell Samahit? S A M A H I T. And how do, you spell, how do you spell Vichin? Vichin? V, v I double C H I N. Vichin. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's there. In, in English book, it is there. Okay. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, I, uh, in the day-to-day -day life, it is said that you work on Kleshas and all. Now, I had in my office, I started doing this. 
but then you know what happens people uh, label you as a weak personality somebody who doesn't uh, uh usko matlab bolte hain ki isme to usko iske tum kuch bhi chalta hai that uh, that uh, matlab issue comes yeah yeah How, this, matlab, issue, this issue will always come you know even even uh, not only in case of pleasures when one is a little self conscious and uh, self aware then he tends to overlook uh, the defects of the other people and that may be taken as his weakness but yes. then, then you, you know we have to understand that we have to draw a line where people can uh, should not take our advantage that that we have to take care but that doesn't mean that you know we are weak uh, when we are doing this and people are able to see that we are we are you know we are giving away uh, very easily to them then may they may they may say that we are, we are weak but we are not actually weak that is that we have to understand and then uh, we have to draw a line between uh, uh, you know you, आपको बोलना पड़ेगा कुछ आपको डर भी दिखाना पड़ेगा कि तुमने नहीं किया दिखाना चाहिए ना दिखाना चाहिए आप अपने बच्चों को डिसिप्लिन कैसे करेंगे नहीं बच्चों को तो कभी कभी लगा के भी देना पड़ता है कभी भी वो भी हो सकता है लेकिन चिल्लाना तो पड़ेगा ही लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं की वी लूज मेंटल बैलेंस वी कैन डू इट आउटवर्डली और वी कैन पुट अप यू नो शो दैट यू नो वी आर वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड यू डोंट डोंट मेस विथ मी but inwardly we remain strong inwardly we remain calm and quiet and relaxed but we do all all necessary things which are required to be done you guys not asking us to stop doing that all our duties when we have to do we are kabhi gussa bhi karna padta see employee you are a boss and your employee is behaving wrongly with you you have to correct him you have to discipline him and for that you have to shout also and you have to take unpleasant decisions it may cause hurt to somebody but it's okay it's part of the process and you are not doing it for a klesha see important thing is that we are not motivated by klesha by doing something if you are seeing that uh, circumstances required this needs to be done this needs to be done even if it is unpleasant people may say that aap to bahut bure ho theek hai bura hai to bura hai lekin ye ye karna hai वहां पे इफ यू आर आर सीकिंग पॉपुलरिटी नहीं समबडी विल क्रिटिसाइज मी एंड यू नो इट विल अफेक्ट माय स्टैंडिंग देन वी आर अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ क्लेशर्स वी वांट टू बी एप्रिशिएटेड वी वांट टू बी लाइक्ड बाय एवरीवन सो दिस फाइन डिस्टिंक्शन इज देयर वी हैव टू बिकम अवेयर ऑफ दैट ओके थैंक यू सर एंड सर इज देयर एनी डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ संपद संपद ज्ञात एंड सवि समाधि एनी डिफरेंस उटिट so there the asmita is the focus of samadhi and one is trying to understand what is the true nature of asmita and asmita is a clashes where we assert i am i am right i am always right i want this i love this i hate this i am afraid of this i don't want this these people are bad i am superior i am always great i am always right when this kind of thoughts are there this kind of i is there it is the clash i and when one is this maintaining awareness of the self ha ha there is some disturbance here. i am muted in ha uh, hope uh, the uh, you got the answer okay we we leave it here time is up Yes, thank sir. Thank you. Yeah, so if, much, if, if 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 there are any more questions, they can be put on the chat in the group. Sure. If if any persistent doubts are there, anything which are which we discussed today, you have any doubts about that, 
you know anything is there it can be put on the chat uh, in the group chat and we will uh, tackle there we will answer there yes sir and i i feel from uh, uh, a particular point which like you know uh, uh, you have like understood or you know contemplated on from this session i think also that you can keep uh, put it on the chat <laughs> Uh, um, huh, about this uh, contemplation this exercise. Today's, yes. Yeah, yeah. Today's some session. Share, Whatever. If, yeah. Some yeah, sharing. If, if you found something good, something which is important, which you think is worthwhile sharing with others, yes. please, yes. please put it on the group. Yes. <laughs> that will be nice. <laughs> yes. Thank so you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste to everyone. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.